welcome to the Hearthstone How to Become an Arena Legend panel. My name is Mike Donay, Senior Game Designer on Hearthstone. I'm joined today by two expert Hearthstone players. We have Trump. Trump is from Team Solomid and he's well known for having created many of the spreadsheets and videos that you use to learn about Arena. And I'm joined by Hafu from Team Cloud9, one of the top 20 arena players in the world. Today we're going to tell you why we love Hearthstone, we're going to tell you why you should love Hearthstone, there's millions of play people that are enjoying it. Trump, why don't you tell me why you love Hearthstone? Wow, why do I love Hearthstone? So I've always liked card games and turn-based strategy games in general. Uh, I've come from a Magic the Gathering background and it just came naturally that I would like to play Hearthstone with my background in World of Warcraft. And it's just so much strategy, so simple to get into. The interface is great. It's great for streaming. People love watching it. There's just so many good things to say about it. Happy, what about you? Hearthstone's actually my first card game and I actually lost in a tutorial on stream so that's pretty embarrassing, but it's so simple yet so challenging with a much higher skill cap than people give it credit for. There's so many things to love about Hearthstone. Uh, I liked all your answers. We're gonna, I can tell you what we're going to do today. We're going to give you some pro tips, help you, if you're new to Hearthstone, understand why it's great and uh, why Arena is great. We're going to talk about all the Goblins versus Gnomes cards that have been spoiled so far and why they're awesome in Arena, and which ones you should pick. And then we're going to build an Arena deck together on live. First, let's talk about what class you should pick. Happy, why don't you start us off? I think at first you should probably pick whatever you're comfortable with, but then when you develop a play style, you should maybe, if you want to play an aggressive deck, try Hunter, it's really, really fun. Maybe Warlock can pick really low drops. If you want to play something slower, controlling, try Paladin or Priest or Dream. Yeah, as far as classes go, I definitely agree with just starting to play one that you're comfortable with and then get to know it a bit more. A lot of people suggest Mage as a good starting one, and I agree, it's got some basic spells and, which are simple and easy to understand. You got the good old Flame Strike, you wipe everyone out, but I've actually kept really close track of my statistics, and I will say that Mage is not in my upper 50% of like best classes. So all of the classes are viable. You really should just pick something that you like and enjoy. Uh, and like Hoffman said, there are some that are more control oriented and then there's some that are more uh, that are more rush oriented if you want to go in that direction. Everyone has different play styles. Play what you're good with, play what you're comfortable with, or try out something new. It's up to you. Next let's talk about mana curve. Very important part. Yeah, my favorite card. Zombie Chav. I hate that card. <laughs> uh, why do you like this card so much, Trap? Tell me about Mana Curve and this card. Well, Zombie Chow is awesome because it's one of the best neutral cards in terms of statistics for mana. And that's generally what you're looking for in Arena. And there's so few good one drops that the Zombie Chow is just something that you can start off so strong, trade against the opponent's two drop, and then just keep staying ahead from there. Uh, one mana, two, three, that's really good. What about you, Hafu? You said you don't like this card. I think it's a really strong card, and I do pick it a lot in Arena. But maybe it's a little bit overrated, just because if you don't play it on turn one, the, uh, the effect is quite bad, especially if you play more aggressively, as I tend to do. So, eh. Do you guys have any more tips about Mana Curve in general that we should talk about? Yeah. Uh, after Nax Ramus came out, uh, in general, there were more early game cards like Zombie Chow and like Spectral Creeper, and it's become more and more important to me to have more two drops. I used to think like five or six two drops were enough, and I usually gave a range of six to eight. Nowadays, I like to make sure that that range is very solidly seven or more, uh, like seven, even eight, and even nine. And you want to have like some amount of three drops as well. You can't ignore that. It's like three or four. Um, how about yourself, Alfie? What do you think about two costs? <laughs> I think eight is way too many, and I think it actually should depend a little bit on the class, too. Some of the hero powers are better than others. For example, like Shaman and Paladin, you're putting something on the board, whereas if you don't actually have a two-drop on Priest, and you like heal yourself, or you heal your opponent, and you're sad. 
Um, yeah, I think it's much more important on those classes, but I, I think you need at least, you know, four, four or five two drops. What about one drops? <laughs> I think playing a one drop in turn one is fine, especially two ones. I mean, if you think about value, right? It's uh, three stats for one minute. That's triple the mana. Oh my gosh, the value. But, um, <laughs> I, I don't think Trump agrees with me with the two ones, although I think that even though they're not, they're definitely not better than three twos, it's okay to have one or two. You know what value is? Value is using your hero ability to knock out one of those two ones for free. So I have been thinking a lot about this recently, and like there's some arguments about card advantage or like tempo advantage. You play your one drop, they have to coin your ability, or they have to spend two mana to kill their one drop. Like to some extent, you gain an advantage, and I can start to understand that now. Uh, speaking of zombie chat, that's five times the mana that you put in in terms of stats. So good. Um, one thing about Arena is there's different play styles. It sounds like Hafu's more of an aggressive player. She tries to take the tempo advantage with the two ones, while Trump is more of a value player. He tries to control the board and get card advantage over the long term. Both are valid strategies. Sometimes with different classes or different decks, you're going to switch between those strategies. Uh, something you'll learn over time by just playing a lot of runs. Let's move on to how to catch up. When you get behind an Arena, it can be really frustrating. You you get behind just by missing your two drop or something like that. What kind of cards and what kind of strategies can you use to catch up? Hapu? You can definitely rely on AoE. That's probably the easiest one. You clear everything off the board. As some of you might know, Flame Strike is absolutely ridiculous in Arena. <laughs> but um, I don't know. You should really know what's in your deck though, and, and know and have a plan on how to catch up. So if you don't have AoE, you know, you have to realize, oh, I'm not going to be able to deal with this flooding. I have to start trading so that my opponent doesn't get favorable trades. And if you have a lot of AoE, you can just kind of sit back and let them flood the board and then take everything out at once. So just have a plan. Yeah, I think that's part of the loveliness of Arena. Like, you can always have such different decks. It's different every time. Uh, that's also why I value good one drops so much, like the non-2-1 one ones. Uh, like, I really highly think Morgan Infiltrator, which is a 2-1, but it's stealth, so you can actually s selectively trade Zombie Chap. And that's how you, that's how, like, this is a slight detour, but when you fall behind, it's somewhat difficult to come back. So that's why I value just having so many early game plays. So that's why I have a bit more twos than Hafu might play. Uh, just so you don't fall behind. If you play a 2 and they don't play a 2, then you're looking pretty good, especially if you have a mana curve to follow that up. Uh, so, weapons, area spells, not getting behind is a really important strategy too, like Trump said. By playing things like Zombie Chow, or e even other one or two drops, just make sure you don't get behind. If you do get behind, use cards like these, like Mind Control Tech. Why are you shaking your head, Hapu? I freaking hate Mind Control Tech so much! I think that is my most hated card in Hearthstone. I, I don't think I am sulking about any other card other than MC Tech. When they take... oh. Oh did my you gosh. lose to it once? Oh my gosh. Did you lose to it a few times? I've lost to it in ridiculous ways. And it's just the worst. Once you lose to it once, I think you start becoming so paranoid. You're like, stop hero powering. If you're a paladin or shaman, you're like, no, it's okay. Don't take that risk. It sounds like I should pick my control tech then. You probably should. Alright. <laughs> now we're going to talk, talk about the goblins versus gnomes cards. Yesterday, about 25 Ooh. goblins versus gnomes cards were revealed. Uh, the, very excited to talk about those in Arena for the very first time with two of the Arena experts. Uh, Goblins vs. Gnomes is the new expansion, and we're going to start by going through those cards. Uh, Mech Warper, your mechs cost one less. Shrinkmeister, a priest card. Battlecry, shrinks a minion, gives it minus two attack. And Fairy Dragon, that you all know. Uh, Trump, what do you think of these three cards? Alright, um, all of these cards also have different valuations from Constructed, so I'll start off by saying that we'll be giving it a more arena look to face. So, uh, Mech Warper, for example, it might be a top pick in Constructed, you build in a mech deck in Arena, you're going to have some mechs, and it, it itself is a mech, which is going to benefit a lot of the other arena cards, uh, which are coming out in this expansion. Um, Shriekmeister, though, is definitely the card to pick. It is really strong in Arena. In Arena, I'm just looking for those individually strong cards, like Yeti, or 
Uh, just really good basic cards. Shriekmeister, 2 mana, 3-2, that's already good. And on top of that, the battle cry is insane. Um, the way I would think of it in Arena is it's like a 3-4 for 2 mana if you play it with a minion because it's going to take 2 less damage when you attack that minion into the shrunken enemy's minion. Sounds really good. What about you, Hafta? What do you think of these cards? I'm just going to have to disagree that it's a 3-4, just because you do have to have board control to kind of benefit off that. But, I mean, it's really ridiculous on Priest, because it is a Priest class card, just because it goes so well with Cabal Shadow Priest. You can start just taking Yetis. Like, to me, that's just going to be so, oh my goodness. But, um, that's yeah. a lot of value. It's a lot of value. <laughs> yeah, Shrinkmeister combos with a lot of Priest cards. Uh, Shadow Word Pain, Cabal Shadow Priest, etc. Uh, so, sounds like Shrinkmeister is your pick here. Great, let's move on to the next one. We have Bomb Lobber. He comes into play, he throws a bomb, deals four damage to a random enemy minion. Goblin Blast Mage. His battle cry is, if you control a mech, deal four damage, randomly split amongst enemy characters, and fires out four little bombs. And Twilight Drake. Happy, what do you like from these? I really like the Goblin Blast Mage. I think it's pretty ridiculous. 5-4 four for 4 is already great for stats, and the battle cry just makes it kind of ridiculous. I mean, you can't reliably get a mech on the board, but even so, I feel like Bomb Lobber is a bit less consistent. Alright, what about you, Trump? Yeah, I definitely agree with the assessment that the Goblin Blast Mage is going to be one of the top cards to pick for a mage in Arena now. Uh, I'm sure... Do you know any statistics about how often we're going to have a mech out? Well, it depends if you're playing against someone who likes board control. Like, the thing is, if you've got a lot of mechs, Goblin Blast Mage obviously will be better. There's about one third of the one third of the minions in Goblin vs. Gnomes are mechs, so keep that in mind. Yeah, that looks really consistent. So, I mean, 4 man 5-4 is good as is. That ability on top is just gravy. Um, I will also mention Bomb Lobber, I think, is an excellent card. And the way, to, the way I evaluate cards is, like, I'm going to think of that battle cry as worth something around 2 mana. Uh, so it's like a 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, and you get an additional draw the 2 mana deal 4 damage to random enemy minion, and you get to play it. So when you package those into a card, those tend to be really strong. They're all, all strong cards. Sounds like I would take... Blast Mage if I had lots of mechs, and uh, maybe Bomb Lumber if I don't. Let's go on to the next one. We got Micro Machine. At the start of each turn, that's your turn and your opponent's turn, he gets plus one attack. So the first time you attack with him, he'll be a 3-2. Piloted Shredder. His death rattle summons a random two-cost minion. That's a minion, any two-cost minion in the game, uh, any class, and Silver Moon Guardian. Akko, what do you think of these cards? I think the Micro Machine is cute, but I think Piloted Shredder is ridiculous. It's kind of like a crazier Harvest Gall on that 4 mana. Probably, I think we talked about this earlier, but it's probably better than a Yeti now. So this is the new staple, go-to neutral for drop in Arena. Mm, better than Yeti. It looks like a lot of fun too. What do you think about the, the random craziness about uh, in it? Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I will also state that Micro Machine, when I first looked at it, I thought it sucked, but at the start of each turn, it turns out. So that card's actually really good in Arena also, since at worst, it's a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two on the opponent's turn. But you let that stay for just two turns, it builds up really, really quickly. But yes, Paladin Shredder is absolutely insane. And don't worry, guys, I did the math. I, I looked up all of the two-cost minions you can get. And it turns out that the average that you can get is somewhere around a 2.25 slash 2.25 in attack and health. So if you add that onto the piloted shredder, we're going to just round down. That's a 6.5 in value for 4, which is way better than Yeti. That sounds like a lot of value if everything works out for you. Yep, and here's some other cool things. Like you can get Millhouse Mana Storm with it, which is a 2 mana 4-4. Four, four. The battle card doesn't come into play. So that's the same. That's the best case. You can also get a Warlock class card like Succubus, get a 4-3. Those are the two best case scenarios. Of or course, Doomsayer. Oh, that, yeah, that's, well. Oh. <laughs> Doomsayer does seem a little wacky. Uh, also, Lore Rocker Joe seems like an interesting option there. Lots of cool options. What I like about Piloted Shredder is that 
you end up in a situation that you're not expecting. You have these creatures in play that you're not used to playing, or maybe from a different class, and that makes for like really skill testing and fun situations. And it's also really cool, like it brings a little bit of arena into Constructed, where you're going to come up with a lot of different situations. Definitely. Next we have Cogmaster. Uh, he gets plus two attack while you have another mech in play, or a mech in play. Clockwork Gnome. His death rattle, he adds a random spare card to your hand. And Leopard Gnome. What do you think about these cards, Trump? All right, well, first of all, before evaluating these cards, we're going to need to know what a spare part is. Excellent question. I have a slide prepared for you. What are spare parts? Uh, spare parts, they're one-cost spells. There's seven of them. They're small power level. Here's the two simplest ones. Whirling Blades gives a minion plus one attack. Armor Plating gives a minion plus one health. Rusty Horn gives a minion taunt. Emergency Coolant freezes a minion. Finicky Cloak Field gives a minion stealth until the end of your turn. It's only friendly minions. Reversing Switch swaps a minion's attack and health. This one has tons of possibilities, very skill testing. And Time Rewinder returns a friendly minion to your hand. Wow, these are cool. Um, I'd like to say that this really fits in with the flavor of the expansion, and on top of that, it's a really cool way of adding something that's like draw a card, but it's not a card, it's just a spare card. And I look at these and I'm like, all right, so how much of a card is this worth? Because it's not worth a full card, these cards are not as good as cards, but they are something. So I have to think of something like maybe they're worth one fourth of a card or maybe half a card. So somewhere around there is what I value them at. All right, sounds good. Now that we've seen spare parts, what would you pick here? So here I think I'm going to go with the Cogmaster. It's kind of situational. If I have a deck with mechs in particular, I would definitely choose the Cogmaster of the Clockwork Gnome. Uh, since the Clockwork Gnome is still just a one mana two one, and then when it dies, you draw, like we're going to say, you draw one third of a card. So maybe the card is worth this five sixths of a card since it's a one mana two one. Interesting. What about you, Hacker? I like two ones, and I think Clockwork Gnome is incredible. And I also want to point out that it's a mech, and we've seen that a lot of these cards combo with having a mech out already. It's a cheap mech, so I think that gets it bumped up a few notches. I think the spare parts really uh, give you more answers to kind of play around what they're doing. So, I don't know. I really like the spare part part of it. Spare parts part of it. And I really like that it's a 2 one for one It's really strong. So, if you need a mech, maybe choose Clockwork Gnome. If you already have some mechs, maybe pick Cogmaster. Also depends how aggressive your deck is, what you need. Next we have Explosive Sheet. Death Rattle deals two damage to all minions, and it's a mech. Annoyatron, another mech, with Taunt and Divine Shield. And Iron Bee Cowl. Uh, what do you think of these cards, Hafu? I think while the Annoyatron is very cute, uh, maybe if you have many, many buff cards, like in Paladin, you have, if you have multiple Blessing of Kings, stuff like that, maybe like Call Masters, um, then you can consider taking Annoyatron, but Generally, you don't ever want to pass AoE. An explosive sheep is a very cheap and efficient AoE. The only downside is you don't get to control it unless you're playing like a mage and you can just hero power it yourself. Um, but I still think for, for two mana, that's like a ridiculous death rattle. What about you, Trump? Yeah, Hellfire is a good class card for Warlock. And now we've got something neutral that you can get to play for half the cost. So I really think Explosive Sheep is a top pick. Annoyatron, uh, I think in Arena it tends to be more close to like two Goldshire Footmen, which is not too exciting. Okay, well, Explosive Sheep, one of your AoEs that you badly need in Arena, helps you catch up. Sounds good, it's also a mech. Next we have Spider Tank, 3-4 uh, with no special ability, but it's a mech. And Tinker Town Technician. Battle cry, if you've got a mech, get plus one, plus one, and get a spare part. And Earth and Ring Farseer, three awesome cards. Which one do you like the best, Trump? <laughs> Man, we got some serious value here. So, three mana, three, four is gonna just be good by default. We've seen how good it is in Priest Star Cultist. And even if the Priest 
Dark Cultist didn't have a death rattle, I think it would still be good. Uh, in this set, mechs actually matter. Uh, so I think the spider tank is a really strong pick. Of course, the Tinker Town Technician is also super value. Three mana for a 4-4, four, four, and you get a spare part uh, for some extra value. In case you already have a lot of mechs, so for here, my choice would depend based on how many mechs I already had. But I'd want to pick both. Both would be nice. So many arena runs where I want to pick both. What about you, Hafe? I'll take all three. They're all, all really, really strong. Three drops. Some of the strongest neutrals. But I... I agree with Trump. I mean, if you just don't have mechs, then there's no point in picking the Tinker Town. It's just a 3-3 three, three for 3. And you're obviously going to take a 3-4 three, for 3. Well, so I, another pick that depends if you've got mechs. You look, one thing you do in a lot in arena is like, look what you have. Look to see if the card you're choosing affects what you have. And this is an excellent example. A lot of value in these picks. Is there any time you guys would pick the Earthen Ring Farseer? Huh, I don't think with this set, like, the, the mech, the 3-4 is just so much stronger, I would say, and the technician has a lot of upside. What if you have, like, two Akanais and multiple Nurshires and Injured Blade Masters? You could, you would take the Earthen. Don't tell me you would take the Earthen. I guess okay, maybe in that There we go. <laughs> look at your combos. Alright, next we have Unstable Portal. This is, uh, these are spells, mage spells. Unstable Portal adds a random minion to your hand, and it costs three less. Unstable Portal costs two. Flame Cannon deals four damage to a random enemy minion. And Arcane Missiles, the card you know. What would you pick here, Hafu? I actually really like Unstable Portal. At first I was kind of unimpressed, but I think, if you really think about it, the template thing that you could potentially gain could just end the game. On turn three, you can play a six drop, like a fire elemental, and then the game would end. So, I don't, I don't know. I think I would, I would have to pick the unstable portal. And it, it's just too much fun as well. Yeah, it definitely is a lot of fun. You can get any class card like fire elemental. But you know what else you can get? You can get a wisp. And I'm really <laughs> sad when that happens. Uh, so, uh, I did a few calculations since that's necessary in order to understand like how much variety there is and how, what you can get. And there's like one third of the cards uh, of minions are actually two or less, roughly, not counting this set, which I haven't uh, been able to include yet. And then like 15, 10, 15% of the time, you're gonna get a one drop, which means you're gonna be really sad. So uh, the portal is a bit too random for my effect, like uh, sometimes there just isn't that good an effect, although I admit that sometimes you can get a really good effect. So I choose the Flame Cannon, where you can actually really control the randomness. As a mage, you can do something like Flame Cannon and then Fire Blast to really efficiently deal with one of those turn four, five health plays. I think it's a really strong card. What about you, Hafu? What would you pick here? Definitely Unstable Portal. So unstable I mean, portal. Yeah, 33%, that's just one in three. I mean, two thirds of the time, you're going to get something better that you can play and just push your tempo advantage. So, I, I mean, how, uh, eh. if you get a whisk, you're really sad. But, I mean, what are the stats on that? Okay. Sure. Uh, I like that they, when they pick different things. It makes me wonder, like, you know, when I'm going through, which one should I pick? Which one's best for my deck? Unstable portal, they both seem awesome. They both seem like a lot of fun. Next, we have legendary cards. We got Dr. Boom, his battle cries to summon two 1 1 Boom bots, Blinktron 3000. He equips a golden weapon for each player. Golden? <laughs> yes, actually, he's Blinktron. Of course, he summons golden weapons. Even when he's not golden, he makes golden weapons. And Harrison Jones, a card that destroys weapons. Uh, what would you pick here, Trump? Well, I mean, I don't think I even need to know what a Boombot is before I pick Dr. Boom. But let's see what Boombot is first. All right, I'll show you. Here we have Dr. Boom and his two Boombots. He summons two as his battle cry. They have a death rattle to deal one to four damage to a random enemy. Could be a minion, could be the enemy player. Wow. Well, now that I see what a Boombot is, that is super value. You get a seven mana for roughly a nine nine, and those Boombots also do an additional damage. So maybe more like a 11-9, 12-9. That's good stuff. Um, from here, I think the Blingatron is like way too situational to pull off successfully in Arena. Uh, it's at its best when your opponent already has a weapon. And in that case, I would say Harrison Jones better than Blingatron since the amount of benefit you get 
when you destroy their weapon and draw cards is really huge. But definitely Dr. Doom. Dr. Boom sounds awesome. What about you, Hafu? Definitely Dr. Boom. I love this card. It's going to be really fun. I'm really excited for it. I agree. Uh, Blinktron and Harrison Jones are just going to be too uh, situational. So, Dr. All right, Boom cool. Good. Uh, it was a nice note that, like Trump said, Blinktron also destroys your opponent's weapon when it replaces it with a new one, so it's a little bit more value there. All right, great. Let's go on to the next one. We have three different spells here. Balance Chosen, a priest spell. Gives a minion plus two, plus four, and spell damage plus one. Bouncing Blades, a warrior spell. Deals one damage to a random minion, and you repeat that, bouncing around the board until it finally destroys one minion, and then it stops. And Blessing of Kings gives a minion plus four, plus four. What would you play, pick here, Hafu? I think I'm all about combos in Arena, and Bouncing Blades seems super fun, especially if you have I mean, commanding shout, maybe like a frothing zerker, and then you charge that frothing zerker. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think bouncing blades would be really fun if you have the cards to kind of back that up. But if not, I would say... Huh, I think Valen's cho Chosen is actually... I, I think they're all around the same. Probably Valen's Chosen if I had to pick one. What about you, Sean? Do you have a strong preference? Uh, the first time I saw Bouncing Blade, I was so happy, and I was going to just pick that every time, but it just turns out that in Arena, I, I think when you can set up the situation where you have almost nothing and they have a lot of things, or they have one big thing, that's where Bouncing Blade is at its best. It might be more of a constructed card, so I'm going to have to lean towards Valen's Chosen here. When you're a priest, uh, getting an additional health buff on your minions is really strong since you can just keep them alive and heal them. And it's really rare to have plus attack on Priest as well. So you play that on your two drop and maybe you can just become a slayer and then just kill everything and you keep killing it. And I see a lot of good things with that. Okay, yeah, Balance Chosen makes a lot of sense because you can heal it. Heal it. Uh, Bouncing Blades obviously has a lot of combos like Hafu mentioned. Minions that get bigger when they take damage along with Bouncing Blade would be awesome. Next we have Upgraded Repair Bot. This is a Priest minion. Gives a friendly mech, mechs only, plus four health. Matter Bomber. Uh, Battle Cry deals six damage randomly split between all other characters, just like Mad Bomber, but twice as fun. And Abomination. What would you pick here, Trump? So, I actually was browsing some statistics about Hearthstone Arena the other day, and it turns out that one of the best cards that like people who go 12 wins go is quite surprisingly Mad Bomber. So. I actually think Matter Bomber is an excellent card as well. Uh, if you're behind, you can actually play it to catch up in the game, which is very important, and you can do it with all sorts of other combos as well. So, like the best case scenario is you play that when you have no minions out, and they have a lot of minions out, and it's almost like you get a 5 mana 5 4 and you get almost an Avenging Wrath on top of that, so that's really good. Still though, I have to just choose the Priest card here, which is a 5 mana 5 9 in value. Really tough to pass that one up. So much value. What about you, Hopper? Yeah, if you have a lot of mechs in your priest raider, and I would definitely take the upgrade to repair bot. It's kind of hard not to. Uh, health buffs in general are pretty ridiculous. And then on priest, you can just keep healing your minions, and then you get infinite value. So I agree. Upgrade to repair bot. All right, so if you need some catch up cards, Matter Bomber. Uh, maybe Abomination, and if you have Max, definitely upgrade Repair Bot, works great for Priests. Alright, second last slide, we have Enhanso Meccano. This guy's crazy, his battle cry gives each other minion a random buff, either Wind Fury Taunt or Divine Shield. And Piloted Sky Golem. Uh, this, the Piloted Max, we talked about them before, but they the pilot comes out in a parachute, and it just like parachutes down into the board. So it's super fun to watch. Uh, and this one summons a random four cost minion when he dies. And big game hunter. Uh, what do you think of these cards, Hapu? The pilot and sky golem looks so fun. I'm all about these random cards. And you can go pilot and sky golem into piloted, is it shredder? So piloted. Yep, piloted shredder, piloted yeah, sky golem. Yeah, piloted shredder, four minute thing, and then you get a two drop, so it's really cool. But, uh, I think the Enhanto Mechano is a cool idea, but I think uh, you have to be ahead on the board to really utilize it, and if you get the taunt, you're probably going to be sad. If you get the win period, you just randomly win. It's kind of cool. 
But I think uh, Pilot and Sky Golem is similar to Cairn. It's just really annoying to deal with and pretty fun as well. What about you, Trump? Yeah, I definitely agree on that note. The, the Enhanceo bot is just so much of a win more card in Arena, I would say. Uh, just because you have to play it when you already have a lot of guys out. And that's kind of the opposite reason on Matter Bomber, where Matter Bomber is better when you play it when you're behind. Uh, I think a card that's good when you're ahead is not as good. Uh, and we're going to see a lot of parachuting uh, coming up soon, because all these piloted cards are really amazing. Like, I think this card is debatably better than even Karen Blood of, which is one of the most ultimate value cards in Arena already. Wow, better than Karen? Why do you say he's better than Karen? Well, uh, this random four mana minion, like, on average, it's going to be somewhere around a 4-4 four, four when you total up all the 4 mana names you get. Some of the best ones you can get are really good, like Pit Lord, which is a 4 mana 5-6 with no battle cry to hinder you. And there's not many that are too bad other than, say, Summoning Portal. Yeah, Summoning Portal. Maybe good if you have a full hand. Alright, cool. Uh, Skyglon sounds really good. And Handsome Mechano better if you've got a lot of minions in play, which doesn't always happen in Arena. And our last slide, we have three legendaries again. We have Sneed's Old Shredder, it's the third card in the piloted cycle. We have Mechineer Thermoplug, oh, sorry, let me read Sneed's. Death Rattle, summon a random legendary minion. And it's a huge mech. We got Mechineer Thermoplug, whenever an enemy minion dies, summon a Leper Gnome. It's going to fill the board with Leper Gnomes if you're in the right position. And Deathway, a classic card. What do you think of these, Hapu? I think they're all really fun. Um, I, I think Sneed's Old Shredder is too good to pass up. But if I, my curve is super, super low, I might go with the Deathwing just because I'm, I feel like Deathwing just wins games. I mean, your opponent can never expect a Deathwing. And yeah, I probably probably would go Sneed's Old Shredder in most of my arena runs. So. Alright, yeah, Deathwing is definitely not something you expect. What about you? That Deathwing is so cool. Uh, I love thinking in Arena, it's like constantly moving up my personal list. But here, I think we might see one of the best legendaries in the game uh, coming up right here, Sneed's Old Shredder. Uh, the value you get on that is insane. So it's 8 mana, 5, 7 already, and when you calculate the average attack and health of a legendary card, a legendary minion, it's somewhere along the lines of like a 5-6, so I'm just going to add that straight up to there, and that means it's an 8 mana, 10, 13, and on top of that, most of the legendary cards have a cool effect also, like Death Rattle sometimes, or something special, like Sylvanas, or Cairn, uh, then the best case scenario for Sneed's Old Shredder is so big, they kill it, and then you get Kalthuzad, and then you resurrect Sneed's Old Shredder, or you get Sneed's Old Shredder, and so your Sneed's Old Shredder just keeps getting Sneed's Old Shredders, and that's insane. Yeah, kills those out into resurrecting Steve's old feather would be insane. Sounds like a lot of fun. Alright, cool. Thanks for talking about those cards. Now that you've seen Goblins vs. Gnomes cards over the last couple days, and, and we just talked about them, what do you think about them? Uh, Happy, why don't you start? I think they're going to be really fun. I'm really excited to play these in Arena when they come out live. And I, I think that a lot of... Uh, I think the silences are going to go up in value by a lot. These death rattles seem pretty ridiculous, and I feel like Shaman and Mage are going to get even better in Arena, just because Shaman has Hex and Earthshot in their kit, and Mage has Sheep, so I don't know. And what about you, Sean? Yeah, I really look forward to um, all of the smaller value plays you can make. Uh, those spare parts, even though they aren't any real card, like I even only value them as one third of a card, when you can make use of that one third of a card effectively, Sometimes it's as good as a card, and that's getting really good value. Um, I like a lot of the Death Rattle Summon a Random Minion cards, because that means you're going to have to really think on your feet. And even though it is randomness, like, it makes you... There is a skill to having a lot of branching decision trees, and knowing like what can happen, and how to best take advantage of a very unusual situation. Cool, yeah, I'm very excited about this. Goblins vs. Gnomes comes out next month. It's the first Hearthstone expansion. It's got tons of fun stuff. There's only been 25 of the over 120 cards revealed so far. So you're in store for a lot of new stuff. And it's coming very soon.